you you make a re- you already made a reference to Richie Blackmore, but yeah. that's kind of a running theme throughout throughout the book. You you mention it quite a bit. Oh man. I I have a question, but I want to hear you tell the story, but I want to ask you what you think, why you think, because you didn't say this in the book, that he never disclosed having met him, having that Eddie never disclosed meeting Richie before when he had. I thought a lot about that. I wish I had that definitive answer. I mean, looking back on it now and thinking about it a lot, because I can remember those moments. Can you um, tell yeah. and tell the story too? Like, let, let tell because I'm not uh, that familiar with this story with uh, Richie Blackmore, or, or just for the audience, please. Gotcha. Okay, so where can I start? Um, so, Edward's over at my place, uh, my my little guest house uh, on Weepaw <laughs> Way, and um, I don't know if you can see behind me. Uh, you can see a little bit, but I, every wall is covered with you know pictures of me and the people I've interviewed. You know. Um, you know, they're just like my little memories of, of mm-hmm. meeting all these amazing people. And one of the pictures is Richie Blackmore. Um, I had, I had interviewed Richie for the, for the cover of Guitar Player right before I met Ed in June of 77. Um, I don't think the cover, I don't think the story was out when I met, uh, Ed, but I'd already done the interview with Richie. I think the interview came out. I don't know, later in 77, I can't remember. I don't I don't have the copy in front of me. So Ed's over there and he sees Blackmore and, you know, doesn't really say anything. Doesn't say anything good or bad. So um, uh, let's fast forward a few months. Um, Rainbow is playing at the Long Beach Arena I mean, I know, I know Ed is a, is, is, is a Blackmore fan. Um, uh, so I think, well, how amazing would it be to take Edward Van Halen to a rainbow show and introduce him to Richie Blackmore, not knowing that he'd already met Richie Blackmore. So um, I'm going to fast forward a, a little bit to that night. So we drive down there in, in, um, Edward's deep. There's no place to park, and he pulls up on the median. I mean, the car is definitely going to be gone when we come out. It's going to have been towed away. But that was it, you know. He just he parked, you know, and then no parking zone. So we go in, and um, Richie was in a a real rare mood that night. Um, uh, he had been playing some dates with. Um, uh, um, Randy Hansen, uh, who, who was kind of like the first of the Jimi Hendrix impersonators, but Randy was really, really good. I mean, he put on the wig, and I think he put on blackface. You know, he had all the Marshall Lamps, man. He had the the, the, the old wah-wahs, and he was using the, the strats. I mean, he had it down. He was a very good guitar player. Um, uh, so we go on thinking uh, it's going to be Randy. Um, the opening act was um, John Cougar, who we heard got food off the stage. So we come in and it's like, you know, the second act, which is going to be Randy Rhodes, and it's Richard Blackmore. I'm going, what the hell? How can that be possible? So after Richie's set, we go backstage. Ed had met Randy. Randy had played the whiskey a little, a little, uh, I think a couple of weeks previously. So we go back and they hug, you know, and this and that. And according to Randy, now this is Randy's story. Richie was so upset by how well Randy had played um, that he refused to go on after Randy. This is Randy's story, um, you know, uh, and consequently Randy um, headlined. So all of this happens and we see that so, um, and Richie was good. Um, I mean, I would have to remember more about this specific show, but I'm sitting there with Edward Van Halen watching Richie Blackmore, you know, man, it's like, it's kind of a surreal moment, you know, I'm trying to put myself, you know, just watch the show, Steve, don't, you know, try to disregard this guy sitting next to you, it was a difficult thing to do. But Richie played really well. Um, um, so afterwards, uh, there's a party, and I was invited, and uh, this is where I'm going to introduce Edward 
Trubisky Blackmore. I'm thinking, my God, this is going to be historic. You know, a meeting of the of arguably the two greatest purveyors of the Fender Stratocaster in the world. I mean, some might argue Jimi Hendrix is in there, of course, and you know later Jeff Beck. But I mean, you know, the old guard, you know, the Young Turk. I mean, this is going to be unbelievable. And like I said, I'd only I'd interviewed Richie just a couple of months before uh, uh, that night. I had actually interviewed him back in 74 as well. And he was a real shithead back then. I mean, he was horrible back then. But when I interviewed him for the guitar player cover, um, he was on his best behavior. You know, I mean, you know, you don't want to piss off the guy writing the cover story and guitar player, right? You know, so he was on his best behavior. I mean, he was really cool that, that night, that, that day, I must admit. So I go back and we walk in and it's in one of the salons on the Queen Mary, you know, the big uh, cruise ship. Mm-hmm. We walk back and um, I see Richie and, and you know, um, I don't know if Ed sees him. And so I said, hey, Ed, you know, so we walk over and Richie kind of sees me, you know, and I could tell there's, you know, some some sense of, of recognition. And uh, yeah, I go, hey, Richie, how's it going, you know? And, and before I could say anything, like, you know, introduce them, you know, Richie turns to Ed and that snide sarcasm that that Richie has honed to a you know a, a, a fine weapon he goes hey I I know you you you, you play guitar don't you and I'm standing there and I'm thinking oh my god what have I done you know Ed's gonna be so pissed he's gonna be so angry and justifiably so you know and he's standing there and I know how hurt he was I mean how could you not be I mean you know you're standing there in front of, of, of your hero and, and he says those things to you. So, you know, we go, we have some drinks, we kind of walk away and, um, you know, we, we, we drive home and I try to apologize to him and he's pretty quiet. And he goes, no, oh, it's okay, man. It's, you know, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I know he was upset and he was hurt. I don't think he was angry with me. Um, um, and later, uh, and I'm trying to remember how much later, Jazz Obrecht wrote, wrote, wrote um, some early, uh, very definitive interviews with, with Edward as well. And in one of them, Ed is talking to him about, uh, yeah, Richie Blackburn goes, yeah, I met Richie one night at the, at the Rainbow. And, you know, he was he really was shitty to me and he treated me like shit. And, um, you know, he was there with John Bonham. And Bonham is another guy who I sort of peripherally met. I never really met him, but but John could be, uh, wow, he could be a handful. Um, he was there with John Bonham, and John Bonham gave him the business. And um, I'm reading this thinking, had I known this, Ed, never in a million years would I have made that introduction. Why didn't you say something? And in trying to get back to your original question, Holly, why didn't Ed say something originally? I think he was so embarrassed by that. I don't think he even wanted to bring it up again, because I did a lot more interviews with him, and he did a lot of other interviews later with with a lot of other writers. And I don't think he ever brought up Edward's, I'm sorry, Richie's name as an influence. I think Edward's way of getting back is Richie. It's like, fuck you, man. I'm not even going to bring you up to to badmouth you. So, uh, yeah, that that, that was a bad night. Um, You know, I I thought, oh, my God, that's going to change the dynamic between Edward and me, you know. I mean. I didn't think it would, but I mean, it could have, Yeah. you, you know, I, I mean, you know, you know, uh, best laid plans, right. You know? So yeah, that, that was unbelievable. 